guys feel about snow after making this movie? Oh my God. I'm in love with it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get enough of it. I, I actually do feel that way. No, I love great. snow. I love skiing. I love um, everything about it. So I'm okay. I'm still okay with it. No, I'm still okay with it. Oh, skiing. really? Wow. Yeah. Yes. I thought it would be a nightmare because it causes reflections and well, I mean, just the brightness of it. There yeah. were, yes. Danny Cohen would probably tell you, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. As the cinematographer, that's yes, a different exactly. thing, right? Yes, for, exactly. for him and we the We had a great time. And the cold. I don't think that that was, he was fans of either of those two things. Oh, oh wow. But he had the best jacket of all of oh, us. Oh, yeah, huge. Just... He had a huge jacket that he called his, pardon the French, but he called it his fuck you coat. Because oh. it was humongous Giant. and it was just and he was like I don't care how it looks I don't care yeah, I am gonna be warm and that's all I care about and yeah. he was probably the warmest person on set mm -hmm. and he's Thank probably you. carrying all the supplies now. yeah, yes. yeah Never exactly like gadgets yeah but he had these huge pants this huge coat <laughs> and he would sort of walk around like a marshmallow <laughs> yeah. yeah but he was warm yeah. so he found Bigfoot he had the, <laughs> yeah. he had the last laugh he did it yeah so do you um, Jim do you ski as well I do, oh, not okay. as well as now. So there was no yes. problem for you guys to get on those slopes. But you guys probably were in snowmobiles, or were you on... We well, sort of ran the gamut. I mean, we had oh. snowcats, we had snowmobiles, lifts, uh, and skis. Yeah. Um, we sort of used everything to our uh, advantage. Yes. Um, just kind of depended on what we were shooting and where we were. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it was it would get complicated at times because the mountain doesn't want, you know, snowcats roaming up and down the slopes when they're active with skiers, yeah. obvious, for obvious reasons. So we would often get deposited on the side of a mountain, you know, before the mountain was open mm -hmm. and then picked up after the mountain <laughs> the was closed. <laughs> so we, so you, you know, were sort of in one area. you're sort of where you are and, and that's you know, where you are. that's where you are. And there's no cozy trailer to crawl into. Uh, I was going to say, it was like guerrilla style filmmaking. Yes, yes, it was. Yes. <laughs> it was. Luckily, yeah. we had a, a gung-ho and patient cast, cast and crew. I yeah. was going to say, I mean, that's a lot of patience with yes. the cold, and I hear there was delays, and you, yes. Yes. Was, you know. Yes, yes. yes. Sounds like yes. a nightmare to me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> On the outside. Yes. It, well, it, well, it presented some challenges, but some it was challenges, fun. Yes. I mean, you never, you know, rarely as an actor or director do you ever get to kind of ski, you know, to your location or mm -hmm. take a lift up to where you're going, you know. Uh, we would take gondolas, you know, at six in the morning, it was pitch black, and you'd be mm -hmm. going up the top of the mountain in total mornings, darkness. Mornings were tough, I thought. Yes. Like just getting there. Yeah. And then once the sun came up. And then the sun know, would come, come up, up and it was beautiful, and you knew you could only shoot till four because mm -hmm. the mountain and the sun are like, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, in a way, you were just like, okay, you know, there's worlds where this could be a lot, of, a lot more hours, so. Now, were the cameras handheld, or were they mounted on the snowmobiles or the <coughs> They were mostly handheld. Oh, uh, yeah, They're pretty used... steady. I mean, usually you can tell when they're handheld. Yeah, yeah we, we had this second unit uh, cinematographer, Thomas Dernhofer, out of Vienna, who had this incredible rig um, that he used, and he had a, you know, three-person crew and you know they had a cameraman with the rig on his back on his back oh. and then uh tommy would be um on skis skiing backwards with like mike talking to the actors the as they were skiing down, and then there was focus puller skiing next to them and they would all sort of ski and then the actors would ski That's aside insane. from them insane. you know wow. so yeah we had uh we lucked out with sort of the the tools that we had and then I hear the avalanches were a real thing. There were a lot of they avalanches. Were very real things, yes. Because oh, be there was a lot of snow. Uh, a ton of a snow. A ton of snow for them. And so not, not in our area, but in areas that weren't. But the cannons would go off is what I was Well, the cannons nightly. would always go off, yes. yes. At, at night, for sure. All night <clears throat> you would hear them. And then you would be sent, you know, little YouTube videos, uh, you know, or homemade <laughs> videos of like, this happened in the valley next to ours, you know, and you're like, Oh, cool, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you'd want to see it because you're doing an avalanche film, you know, and you're like, not right. really. Yeah, not really. <laughs> we want to live it. We don't want to see <laughs> yes, what it's really like, yeah. But there was so much snow, and they got it in December, which is a little bit rare for them. They usually get more snow January, February, so. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it just looked amazing. Yeah. Just, like, the cinematography. Yeah. I was like, how'd they get that shot? And, like, the whole time I'm thinking, like, how'd they do that? I that know. so cool. Yeah, a lot of it, yeah. A lot of people, a lot of it looks so, like, green 
screen. We only had one, and that's yes. just the avalanche. Everything wow. else was just... Yeah, because it looked like the documentaries you see, um, the skiers and right. the yeah. racing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. Kind of level. Yeah. I know. We kept saying, like, nobody's going to believe that we were here because it looks <laughs> fake. Yeah. <you> know? <laughs> yeah. This is real. It has to be real. You can't fake yes. it. I know. Yeah. The, the, the whole the... gondola and everything, we were like, is that... Our Practical. phones are just loaded with thousands of landscape pictures from being there because you're, you know, the light changes slightly and you're like, oh, now so look at this. Picture, you know? Same picture. Same picture. Yeah. <laughs> it just looked all very smooth. Oh, surprising good. Surprising for a film. I mean, you yes. know, capture all that. Yeah. Well, again, we were blessed with Danny Cohen, um, Dave Warren, our production designer, just a really wonderful team to help support us and make it look as good as it did. So now the people in front of the camera, Will and Julia, yeah. I believe are skiers, or they can ski? They can ski. They can ski, yes. You're yes. going to have to, right? You don't want to take somebody who's never no, skied. No, I know. I've tried to ski. Yeah. It would have been, not happen. we would yeah. have been, I think, at a distinct disadvantage had Especially for our you. actors not been yes. able to ski. <laughs> yes. Because uh, the nerves might take over, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And there's just something you can't. You come in and out of scenes, and you're just sort of trying to work your way around it. Even just walking in ski boots, if you're not familiar with what that feels it like, and you're trying to act like you do, <clears throat> you can tell. Yeah. You know, like if you're. Moments. Yes, yeah. exactly. Popping you're like, off, oh, they don't on. ski. Yeah. You know, I, then nobody walks like that. That would be me. Yeah. <laughs> so we again lucked out that they're good skiers, and we could we could use them for a lot of our um, for a lot of most of what we shot. Mm -hmm. Now I was reading that Will and Julia never worked together, which I find very surprising. Two yes. comedic minds that never yeah. like worked together. Yeah. Yes. So what was your assignment for them to get to know each other and be this couple that's been married for years? Well, I think they beat us to that punch. Yeah. I think yeah. they instantly sort of bonded in general. We sort of. Um, and, and I think just everything sort of, uh, I think both of them are sort of imp uh, floored by the idea that their paths were sort of walking so closely to each other and just hadn't crossed yet. And obviously both being married, both having families, both having been on vacations before, I'm sure there was plenty for them yeah. to pull from. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so it really, it really was about, really I put it on them in the sense that they just sort of came to the table mm -hmm. uh, with an instant connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and despite being bigger, you know, these big celebrities and these sort of comedic icons, mm -hmm. they're very grounded, people. lovely people. And yeah. so I think that, that helps. naturally just, you know, drew them closer. Mm -hmm. And then I was reading the notes that the kids uh, were often entertained by Julian Will's Antics. Antics. Yes. <laughs> yes. So how did you bring them down to be, you know, to yes. play this couple? I mean, what was there, that like? There were definitely some moments where you'd see cracks on their they would start smiling, yes. you know, at yes. will, uh, both of them doing something either from the script or just an improv. Yes. Um, and, but we also looked at with them because, you know, finding like these wonderful, very natural uh, kid, kids, actors, you know, who had these little old souls that just, I mean, that's what you're looking oh, for. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and we couldn't have been better to have them, you know. Uh, so, so, yes, I think you just kept reminding them that you're on camera. And yes. sometimes when they were off camera, they were also having fun listening. Uh -huh. yeah. And so, you know, remind them to be in the scene, even though you're not on camera, because <laughs> they're looking at you and you're just cracking up. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that would be hard. Yeah. Okay, so did you have to stop him from taking off his shirt in the, at the bar where he's dancing away? <laughs> I just, you see him take off his shirt all the time. You're like, please oh, don't take off your no, shirt. No, oh, yeah. he... he very pointedly said at the beginning of this, like, I don't have to take off my clothes and run around in my underwear, do I? <laughs> no, no. And he said, no, not at no. all. And he's like, okay, great. Because I, I, uh, I think he was very game for uh, this type of movie. Yeah, because yeah. he's so serious. I mean. Yeah, and the, t the tone of this film, I think he was excited to play. He's obviously extremely talented. And, you know, the, the broader... Um, projects he's been a part of, he's fantastic in. I think he relished the opportunity to do something yeah. that was a little different than that. Yeah. And while this movie certainly has plenty of humor in it, uh, it's sort of born out of the drama that exists and that sort of uncomfortable and the discomfort that exists. So I think he was he was excited from the get go for that. So even though he's played these funny parts, he's always played as vulnerable. That's kind of like this dorky kind of guy who's mm -hmm. really vulnerable. You yes, know? Yes. So it's nice to see that here. Yes. Right? Yeah. I mean, so you don't have to kind of like bring it out of him. He kind of always has that minus the comedy. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, I think I think that vulnerability, that likability, that, that, you know, person you sympathize with is important to a character like this, yeah. you know, to have someone who does, makes a choice that's easily to be on her side. But, you know, I think what, to his credit, you know, we just have this sort of heart, 
you know, beating for for both Will and mm -hmm. his portrayal of Pete. So I think that's that's key to this character. Yeah, because it's very tricky because you could ad automatically hate the guy for what Absolutely. he did, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, since we know Will Smith, it kind of plays into his persona. It plays into his persona, but I think also it's like, you know, to, you know, if we are attracted to characters who are flawed or make mistakes, mm -hmm. and this movie was about keeping it muddy because even, even Billy's character later makes choices that she would probably regret, bringing the kids yeah. out yeah. And, and obviously uh, kissing her ski instructor, which she chooses to keep to herself. But both these people are lying to each other across from the mirror for now, yeah. you know, and they have work to be done. And I think Will, you know, to his credit, he's, you know, that man knows how to play drunk. Um, which is not an easy, easy task no, at all. At but all. then to find a layer of it, and that's partly, you know, to be in a scene with Zach that has a window into exactly what's going on in his brain. Oh, yeah. That's very identifiable for people. We, yeah, we, all, make, all, we all make mistakes and we all hold on to something that would be easy to rectify. Yeah, all those drunk moments where you realize, yeah. yes. I'm just, a creep. Or I right. did this. Yeah, and just, like <laughs> and just I, the vulnerability. I'm, I'm hurting that and I don't, I, I know I made a mistake. I don't know. Well, speaking of that scene where they bring out the kids, mm -hmm. I mean, that was such a cringe-worthy. I mean, I we've all, I don't know if you guys, but I've been in those moments where couples are arguing in uh, front of other yes. people, and you're like, mm, yes. 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 Did that Was that based? I mean, did you kind of amp that up from experience, from having that, been in that situation? or? I think it's just such a, um, it, the, like we've talked about, it has such a theatrical quality to it. It really feels like a play. Mm -hmm. And certainly I think, you know, when you are, you draw from experiences, you know, when, you, when you're a kid and you see, I, I always remember, you know, when I was a kid and I went over to a friend's house and then the, the mother or father would sort of be stern with the, you know, my friend and I would always sort of feel like, oh, I feel so awkward here, yeah. you know, it's, or when you're at a dinner party and a couple is not getting along and you can see the tension, it's sort of that same yeah. identifiable feeling and we really wanted to sort of view the scene through Zach and Rosie who mm -hmm. are sort of our voyeurs into this mess right. mm -hmm. and uh, I think it was just important to ratchet up the tension and then find little moments to be able to release it with some comedy to let the audience kind of breathe and laugh. Um, but like any, you know, I forget whoever said it, but tension is the sort of key to, I think, films and mm -hmm. storytelling. Um, and so we were just trying to do our part to, <laughs> to, uh, to represent that in the scene. And you shot it like a play, right? Like a single yes. shot? Well, we, we ran the whole thing from beginning to end over and over again. Okay. So in the sense that we would we we change the coverage. coverage. We never yeah, we changed a lot of coverage. So, so, but we allowed the whole scene to play out. Mm, yeah. Nice. Over three days. Over so three days. Yeah. 10 to 12 pages, pages. I read. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we just had to make sure we had enough memory on the camera to, to make it, to to make it through the, the entirety of the scene because yeah. it was a beast. Uh, but the the benefit of that was just the subtleties and nuances and the performances that come out. They discover yeah. over three days. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And just th their, I mean, it's a credit to the four actors in that scene how powerful it is because their acting is terrific. Now, did you see it amped up by the third day? I mean, was it well, like at a different level? It was at a different level. It was. When you asked, but the third day, um, so we had, we had uh, obviously, the, the, we had created masters from both sides of the room. Mm -hmm. So we, we wanted to, obviously we could go anywhere we wanted, which meant we would need to protect ourselves and having coverage on both sides of their shoulders, for example. And so on the, uh, on the third day, I think it was, Danny Cohen mentioned to us, our photographer mentioned we might want to get a couple takes from the opposite side of mm -hmm. their shoulders. So we had sort of done the emotional stuff, but we sort of had to tell uh, Will and Julia, we're going to have to do like two more takes, just two more. <laughs> of that whole thing. And of course they were gung-ho for it, but of course they had to process it. Like, yeah. okay, here we go. And to their credit, A, it, it had evolved because everything that's in that, in the actual cut of the movie, at least her story recounting it and his reaction to that is all from that third day. Like, oh. it had sort of gone to a, it was already great, we had it, but then there was just something that had happened, you know? It became, maybe it was because they thought it was done and, and I think Will's reactions, they, there was a vulnerability, there was this, mm -hmm. they were chipping away at each other mm -hmm. in, a, in the best possible way, and that's what we used, the whole thing. 
It could have also been their frustration with us. Yeah, coming out in <laughs> they could have. Acting. They could have been just. Uh, they were using uh, using that our anger. Face was on Will and. <laughs> yeah. We're using the Julia. anger towards us to to really dig deep. Which well, is fair. Which is fair. Yeah. Whatever it takes, Jim. Well, it worked. Yeah. That was such a powerful scene. Yeah. Thank awesome. you. Congratulations. Thank you.